So, hi, again. Um, <laughs> like third, fourth time, so we'll become the best friends here. Um, so from GraphQL, we can generate more things just by the power of a static schema. So like I said before, we can uh, not only we can generate a GraphQL server, but we can generate static typings, like TypeScript typings or flow typings. We can generate dot, uh, C Sharp classes and Java classes. And we can even generate ORM code, which will then generate our databases. So what does it mean? Like, we can actually generate anything. So we can just build tools that will generate this and will generate that. But what I'm going to show you today is a tool that lets you generate whatever you want. So GraphQL Code Generator is basically a way for you to write your own templates to generate anything from your, GraphQL API, from your GraphQL API and queries. So a few examples are like TypeScript typings of frauds. When this tool, when we created, um, when not we, like there's a guy called Dotan Simcha uh, that created this tool. So he created the TypeScript typings. In order to do flow typings, it took him five minutes. So um, I'll show you how to do that. But more than that, I want to show you what can I really do with it, with it instead of just talking. So let's go into code. And let's go here. Can you see? Yeah. So you can see that I have a schema. Like regular user has an ID and last name and everything. But we also added annotations. We said this is an entity. So actually, when we'll traverse the schema, we can say this is an entity of an ORM from Mongo, for example. And I can map through it and maybe add context. So that is very powerful, because what I can do right now is just to run one single command, yarn generate, which will run the generator over all of my code. And it will generate a few different things here. First of all, it will generate types, automatically, automatic types from this schema. The second thing it will, it will generate is actually the code itself. It will generate the resolver for how to send code, a post and how, to, uh, and how to respond to posts and users. So with one line of code, I will now just run my server. Can you see also the thing here? I will just run my server, which was completely generated. And I'll refresh the page, query, and I get a complete working server with GraphQL, Mongo, and all the code you need for a, for a server just from stack, static typings, including the docs. So what else can you do with it? So first of all, it means that you can create your app in basically five minutes, or maybe less. But also, you can, opti you can always customize the template. So here is an example of a template. It's just handlebars, but you can also write just regular JavaScript. And then we can create anything. So we can create, instead of now creating Mongo, we can create an ORM code for SQL. So we can generate our all a, a complete uh, backend for, let's say, uh, Node, TypeScript, and SQL. We can generate a Java backend with SQL or Mongo. We can generate anything, including a UI. We can actually generate UI from this thing. Um, for, for that you know can be used by admin automatic admin panels and things like that. So this is just an example of what you can do with just li one line of code. You don't need services. You don't need backend as a services. You can just write your template, your your schema, and generate your whole backend. Um, that's it. Thank you. And that's my cue. Okay, great. Let's look at all the questions. All one of it. <laughs> da, 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 da. Let, I will read it. Is GraphQL Code Generator any relationship with Swagger Code Generator, or is it inspired by similar tools? Oh, this is a great question. So yes, it's basically uh, Swagger. Swagger Code Gen was the direct um, like inspiration for for creating this tool. With Swagger Code Gen. You can write a co you can write like a schema, which is a bit uglier than GraphQL, but that's fine. And then you can generate, for example, REST endpoints. Now, what you can do with this tool, which is super interesting, 
you can write your GraphQL schema, generate with the cogen Swagger schema, and then generate REST endpoints. So all you need to do is write a GraphQL schema, and you get basically two APIs together without writing any code. GraphQL API and a REST API alongside each other. Next question. Do you have a solution to generate code, extend it manually, then change UQL schema and regenerate it? Um, you may, uh, well, again, so to generate code, extend it manually, and then, yes, oh, this is a great question. Um, I'm happy that you like my questions. <laughs> yeah, you have really good yeah, questions. Thank you. Um, so the interesting thing here, I'm not sure you have a good example, but here I have a handlebars. Uh, can we show, can oh. show the screen back, please? No, that's OK. I'll give it time. Yeah. Ah. OK, so the interesting thing here, like what you see here is basically handlebars. But we have an example. I don't have it here. But you can actually put those. Um, you can do the same uh, generations and same directives over a React file, for example, like a, a JSX file or over just a regular JavaScript file. So you can have just write your regular React code and then just mark like a certain section of your React code saying this thing would be generated automatically by my schema. But still keep changing the code. So yeah, this is an amazing question and it works. <laughs> so hopefully the next amazing question is, is it similar to GraphQL? Uh, another great, great question. Wow. So I'm GraphQL roll, basically yeah. does that for you, right? It's a service. You write a schema, and they generate the backend for you. But you need to host everything on their servers. Also, um, when you generate that server, um, maybe, like, let's say they're open source their, their framework. Probably they use, uh, I don't know what they use, like Scala or whatever they use on the backend. What if you don't want to use Scala? You want to use .NET, or you want to use Node? Then with this tool, you can share the same logics, but generate for any server. And even more simple than, than GraphQL, because you just you write your schema, you generate it locally, and boom, you have a server. So, so we have time for one question, uh, one more question. Where is the best place to cache a GraphQL requests? Client mm. GraphQL or GraphQL database? Um, that's, that's a very good question again. Um, so caching GraphQL requests can be done in many, many layers. Uh, it's not related to this talk, but it's a good question. First layer can be done on the client side. Like, Apollo client has a local cache, and you can use that cache to, say, to do whatever you want. For example, uh, do optimistic UI, or just if your component needs data and the data already in, is in your cache, you can just retrieve it from that and not go to the server at all. But you can also go to the server and that level also cache. You can cache by uh, query, and you can cache behind the, the GraphQL server. So you, you, you can cache before the GraphQL server and, and, and also behind. Um, one very, very nice solution in, uh, that can help you cache um, on the server, but before running the GraphQL, uh, is uh, Apollo Engine, or GraphQL Engine, which is a very powerful tool that I think is launching in two hours in San Francisco. So. You can, try, you can try out the GraphQL Summit and see the updates there. Great. Uri, thank you so much.